Hi, my name is Jade. I'm a photographer based in Nam, Melbourne. My photography practice focuses around themes of identity, race and culture for black people of colour. You can walk us through this work, you can talk about technicalities, what you felt, why you produced it and what it meant to you. So this image in particular was kind of introducing this series. So as we can see, there's a figure who's falling into this void. It's kind of exploring, entering this feeling of loneliness in this kind of like world that we're all navigating yeah. in um, a predominantly European space yeah. and um, how we present ourselves and our beauty, um, especially something like braids, a particular hairstyle that I think has a lot of deep connection and root um, that we can all kind of acknowledge. And I'm um, emphasising this by creating this kind of ethereal photograph for something that was um, really important to me. So likewise with this photograph here, navigating in a space where you're not necessarily the idea of like what yeah. someone perceives as beautiful. Exactly. And um, especially like with our features and hair, like that's something that I really try to emphasise in a lot of these pictures, like yeah. the things that inherently highlight our blackness and um, despite kind of speaking about feelings of not feeling as beautiful, all these images are highlighting um, all the beauty within these yeah. individuals as what well. What emotions were you trying to like capture or bring out from the uh, models yeah. that were in it? Um, I think I was trying to project a lot of like internal thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, so I know there's like a lot of like thoughts of just like kind of that self-hatred and um, just like loss of perception of self as yeah. well. Um, so really trying to express these emotively through the photographs. Um, likewise with this one, the model's covering her face, kind of yeah. giving that feeling of um, like loss of identity and feeling of being in this kind of like void and not really like understanding where yeah. oneself sits in that kind of space. Um, yeah. That was kind of the feeling I was giving um, with these photographs. And I love this one because it's like, I can see just like detail of the hair, the braids, but also like it's you've kind of hidden the features and it's um, like the way in which like, the close-up of the eye and how you're trying to kind of communicate kind of like a mystery of who is this person, what ethnicity could they even be, what you know, yeah. type of, not necessarily type of blackness, but, you know, something that's really big amongst the community is like, you know, colorism and like where do people sit in the shades yeah. of, um, you know, shades of being black. I'm yeah, curious exactly. about. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely was kind of give that, with the tight cropping, that feeling of constrictment and like, um, like you said, you don't necessarily know who this person is. Yeah. Um, but like the braids are something that like we can all identify with being black and like a cultural experience of getting our hair done and mm -hmm. um, yeah, kind of just like that feeling of being stuck in a sense of like um, with the reoccurring like white backgrounds, it's kind of all kind of following this dystopian kind of like feel of just kind of being in this like environment of, yeah. you know, kind of like navigating through. Through, so, yeah. yeah. And then for this one, it's like you've introduced this level of tension where, you know, the model is trying to break out of these you know, tights and what, like speak to what, why you decided to frame it or position it in this way. Yeah, so um, with this one, um, I really wanted to kind of visually show that feeling of like conformity and also breaking out of conformity. Yeah. Um, so the tights are representative of that kind of feeling that we all have to kind of censor ourselves and um, to act a certain way in particular places and points of time. So yeah. the ripping of the tights is significant of one kind of like coming to senses of like understanding one's identity and that kind mm. of transitional phase of going through like understanding oneself and one's blackness and yeah kind of breaking out of these standards that we all kind of are expected to live by yeah. and kind of rewriting our own narratives and being like who we are as individuals. As individuals. Yeah. And it's interesting when you know you introduce colour into your work how do you intend to kind of tell similar stories but you know, the way in which you position the model and, you know, how you introduce different textiles, like how does that change yeah, what you're so, to communicate? Um, with this one, um, I asked the models specifically to pick a colour in which they felt um, was, like, important to them. So for this model, like, yellow was something that she felt was quite important to them. Um, and this fabric is acting as, like, a layer to kind of, like, conceal and feeling like you're in a bubble and not being able to fully express oneself. And yeah. also, like, a lot of these related back to, like, childhood memories for these women of, like, when they were younger, like, mm -hmm. kind of, like, navigating themselves in Australia. Like, I know a lot of us haven't grown up necessarily with, like, large black populations and trying to, like, understand oneself in that space. And um, that's why the fabric is kind of layered over to kind of conceal and, like, give a feeling of, like, wanting to escape this space but not sure on how to exactly get there and how to become self-acceptant um, yeah. which comes to these kind of transitional images where the fabric then lays behind the model mm. um, and then you're able to see more of the features and the details and it, I guess it kind of shows that sense of growth that um, a lot of us have as we get older which yeah. is really beautiful.
And I think what's wonderful is the way in which like you color grade and you like make sure that the skin tones are accurately represented mm. and it's not you know blowing out the highlights or you know making it too dark but it's yeah. accurate yeah exactly and i think that's something that's like really important especially when we're representing black women and like all the melanin that we all come in yeah um, really giving that really accurate description and um yeah like photographing as they are like these are untouched images and as they should be i think we need to show all those features that we have and yeah yeah, and then also just like capture the different types of emotions that black women can experience. Mm. You know, you've got in the first series, the black and white ones where, you know, they're experiencing, you know, hiding or they're, you know, experiencing tension. And here it's kind of like freedom and, you know, all these different ways in which just like allowing the body to kind of like communicate a different message. Yeah, like I definitely like wanted to kind of incorporate that feeling of like movement and just like trying to get out of this kind of space of like constrictment and confinement and like in this image in particular, um, kind of showing that kind of feeling of navigating out of that space um, that we once felt like very confined in. Yeah, and what about this image when you've introduced two women into the frame, like what type of you know, story you're trying to tell with this one? Yes, I think with this one, um, I kind of want to speak to the bond that a lot of like black women have with each other. Um, mm -hmm. Also, like the diversity of what blackness comes in, like from um, lighter shades to darker shades, and all of our different hair textures as yeah. well. And this series in particular um, is called Black is Blueprint, so it mm. speaks to a lot of these emerging trends that we see coming out and um, how they all are rooted in a lot of our history and our culture. So you see things popularized, such as like hoop earrings and baby hairs and tracksuits, um, <laughs> all that we see now, and it always gets rebranded as something new and something revolutionary and I kind of just wanted to speak to the creators of these trends and um, I guess give a place for acknowledgement and hence the blue lighting on the subjects as well. Yeah, there's a lot of really like interesting and iconic like, you know, black R&B mm. music videos, music, um, you know, influences that I'm seeing in the works of this specific series. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely wanted to speak to like a lot of those trends that we've seen and like also just like things that we may not get necessarily praised upon, like having braids or like it gets classed as like ghetto and like not like presentable in certain environments, but then as it's rebranded on like um, others, it gets viewed as like a revolutionary, really cool, <laughs> really cool trendy. Yeah, so just like speaking to, um, I guess black individuals being a lot of the originators for a lot of these trends and um, kind of making a statement with that. And yeah, something I'm definitely gonna be exploring a lot more. I love that you um, speak to culture and blackness and identity across different types of you know, imagery that you're producing. And I think that the way in which you like respect and also like highlight and uplift is really beautiful. And is that something that you see yourself making more works Yeah, like, definitely. Um, it's always, I've felt like a strong tie to like my political views and um, kind of creating a space for like black men and women um, in a photographic sense. and especially like when it comes to exhibiting in galleries, like um, having a visual representation, that's something that others can look upon is something I really wanna explore more. And um, yeah, definitely um, I will wanna explore plenty more issues and um, also inherently highlighting all of this beauty that we all have and all the culture that we share as well. Yeah. Is, yeah. Awesome, yay.